welcome to the second part of this episode of the Deus Ex Cinema Podcast, where we'll be talking about Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I'm your host, Aaron Kluse. Joining me is Marty Cynical Spider-Man Adams. Nailed it. <laughs> and Soraya Baines Spider-Man Uchak. <laughs> so guys, uh, spoiler free, what did you guys think of... Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Dude, honestly, it's probably one of the favorite, my favorite movies I've seen in a while. Yeah? Like, for real. Yeah. It was a really entertaining movie, and I want to see it again. Yeah. I, I, I can't ag- disagree with you. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was good in every way that I need a Spider-Man movie to be good. Yeah. Really. Uh, I really liked it. I... How long was it? Uh, let's see. Um, right you said it was like an hour and 50 because I was asking... Hour and 57. Hour and 57? Yep. It didn't feel like an hour and 57? No, because it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> but, like, I would be willing to see, like, a four-hour movie if it was like that. I'd be willing to see a four-hour movie of a, if at least half of it is just noir spider <laughs> <laughs> This is just Nick Cage doing this noir shit. But, yeah, I would, I would see that time and time again yeah which was i was pleasantly surprised because i wasn't expecting to like it as much as i did really yeah i thought it would be like yeah it'll be a fun thing to go check out and forget about but like i don't know it was it was something that i haven't seen before i think it it, it, for me going to it almost struck me like the lego movie Mm -hmm. where i was like okay it's probably going to be enjoyable it's just gonna be a generic kids movie but it's gonna look good right and it feels like you're gonna be like the whole gimmicks it's like a cartoon car comic book thing yeah but it, again like the lego movie you know when that came out it's like oh it's legos it looks like it's fake stop motion and stuff by the end of it you don't realize like the art style as much yeah like and it se- like even this seemed really natural yeah it, yeah it completely won me over pretty quickly <laughs> i thought the intro like credit kind of thing was too long though yeah i i guess if we want to get into problems with it right away <laughs> so i was just i was just pointing it out i was like i was sitting there in the theater and i was like this is this is taking a while yeah like just can we i want to get to it yeah yeah the i think the issue i had with it would probably be pacing um and again we're not going into spoilers yet but especially the beginning it's such a lot of introduction to the characters L- a lot longer than you need and they did i have no, I complained to both of you about this, but like the, the music, it's almost like Suicide Squad. I really like the music choices. Well, yeah, which is fine. I'm not saying the music choices are bad. I just think there's too many of them okay. because it's just constantly different song, thirty seconds of it, different song, thirty seconds of it, just repeatedly. It's like we get it. You're setting your tone. You got the style, hip hop, new wave, our tour, the hip hop, pop music, whatever. That's fine, but just chill it down a little bit. Give me a classical score in the background. That's fine. Um, and then also with the pacing issues, I felt like it hit a lot of the same emotional beats really repeatedly, mm-hmm. which I guess we can get more into once we get into spoilers specifically. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, I think a lot of the complaints in that regard are just basically, that's just kind of the nature of the beast with that kind of movie. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's fine. Like, like I said, I still loved it. Yeah. <laughs> so It wasn't too dis- detracting. It's just, there was a couple moments where. It was trying really hard to get me to go to a certain place again, and I was just like, I already did it. I'm not really interested in going back. <laughs> not again. Sorry. <laughs> you already played that card. Um, but one thing that really surprised me with it was the fighting. The action choreography was so fucking good. Oh, yeah. Like, just every single scene was fun to watch it was action-packed when it needed to be but you could see what was happening it was extremely inventive um like there was there was the one fight scene where you have a whole bunch of characters just fighting in a small house so it's like super cramped well and that's the first thing i noticed once it started to happen i'm like this is actually fucking awesome (laughs) it looks good you know Mm. like yeah like this like this looks like much better action than movies that have four times this budget Mm. This movie was a lot funnier than I thought it was going to be. Oh, yeah. It was very funny. I thought it hit its funny moments really, really well. Yeah. I mean, they were spaced pretty well, too. Like, yeah. I think the flow in that regard was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was a couple jokes that didn't land. 
for me personally. Whereas, but it is a kids movie, so yeah. it's fine. <laughs> Not every kids movie can be Kubo. Kubo <laughs> isn't even funny. Kubo's really sad. There's some good fucking jokes in Kubo. If you're called monkey and I'm called beetle, why isn't he called boy? That's a hilarious joke. <laughs> I only because Mark <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. That's a good joke. <laughs> I guess that's one thing we could talk about is the voice acting. Um, they used a lot of no names. I wouldn't say no names. Oh. Uh, I mean, they had... Mahershala Ali, I believe is his that name. Is. That's the black man in Green Book that we just saw recently. That was him? That was him. He was uh, Uncle Aaron. Oh, shit. Yeah. I know that. Yep. Same actor there. Uh, Zoe Kravitz was Mary Jane. I don't Jane. know who that is. Let me see what else she was in. Uh, she is in Mad Max, X-Men First Class, Divergent. Can I see a picture of her? I think she's the... Oh! Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I know her too. She's up there. Um, Shamik Moore who was Miles Morales. I'm not sure who he is. I'm looking it up right now. Oh, he was in Dope. I don't know that. Um, who plays um, Peter Parker? Peter B. Parker. Peter B. Parker? Jake Johnson. Okay. His voice sounded super familiar, and I could have sworn... That when this movie was first being teased, I thought it was supposed to be Ben Affleck who was him. Or was it because he looks like Ben Affleck? It's probably just because he looks like Ben Affleck. Okay, because I was thinking, like, that's... I was trying to listen to him. Oh! Yeah, he's the stoner guy him. from Tay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love that guy. Uh, and then it also had Haley Steinfeld as Gwen Stacy. I didn't... I, I don't like Haley Steinfeld. Eh, she's alright. I think it worked good for the... For, I agree. It had John Mulaney as Spider Ham. <laughs> that was him. Yep. Okay. And then Nick Cage as <laughs> Spider Man Noir. Oh my God! Original Peter Parker is Chris Pine. What? Just normal Peter Parker is Chris Pine. Or the one. Blonde one. Yes. Are they like. <laughs> Leave Schreiber's also in it. Who's Leave Schreiber? She's a kingpin. I don't. I think she's asking one? who the actor is. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I love him! <laughs> See, like I said, it has a very but strong voice cast. I just you know, don't know. More Marvel. <laughs> I just didn't... I couldn't put faces to any of the names. Yeah, they all did a very good job, I thought. Except for Nicolas Cage. I mean, that was just Nicolas Cage being Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> that's all you need. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought they all did a great job. Um, which I, I think this movie in particular really depended on with how vast of a cast it has mm -hmm. like if each character didn't have a very distinct personality personality and voice to it it would have felt fallen much flatter i think I can see it. yeah i mean it's like all the characters like they, they fit really well um and they were interesting but they still felt like comfortable yeah like uh for like you know Miles's dad and stuff like that, it sounded like you would expect him to. Yeah. You know, like you just the voice, the delivery, and everything. Yeah. You know. I thought it was all very cohesive. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like they all cohesive. they all worked really well together, mm -hmm. even though you couldn't see them. Yeah. Just like Marty's saying is like how they enunciate and how they like react to each other's like little yeah quips and shit. There's say. it. I think there's. And I don't know how they made this particular movie, but there's this film, this small indie animated film called Animal Crackers, mm -hmm. where it's John Krasinski and Emily Bloom um, playing a married couple. Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt. The one he's married to. Playing a married couple. Oh, that's and, weird. Yeah. They're actually married. Well, that's why they did it. Oh. Was it because they got John Krasinski and they were looking for an actress and he was like, hey, my wife would love to do it. And so then they did it really cheap for this indie film. Huh. And they just filmed it in the same studio, like just bouncing off each other, going off script, kind of half improving it, just acting out how they are as parents. Mm -hmm. And I got a very similar feel to this, where it felt like they were all just in one room. Yeah. And like that they're all just reading lines together. Whereas like there's some, like some Pixar movies I think have a big problem where it feels like they're not even in the same location. Yeah, it's like yeah. everyone is off in different parts of the country, record their lines, send them in. Yeah. You know. and it's just a big fucking Google Doc <laughs> where <laughs> you can see the script of the movie play out in waveform. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's the big thing. This movie felt really natural, like just yeah, you know, from top to bottom. Which is ridiculous because it's super stylized. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, some of the other stuff uh, in there too, though. I wanted to talk about was in relation to the stylization of it. Um, was there something you wanted to say about it? No, you looked very, I was <laughs> you just, looked very excited. I was just like, oh, this this movie was pretty. Yeah, it was gorgeous, and there were so many um, moments where it just had such depth to it that it felt like it was like a three D TV yeah. or something, where it was just. Especially in the action scenes, mm-hmm. where like Miles would be like jumping or doing a roll, and you could just see stuff way off in the background. It just looked gorgeous well, like, so much. I think the the one the forest scene, you know, yeah, was, the forest too, because it had a lot of depth. You know, just mm-hmm. looking back through there and like mm-hmm. the forest, and again going back to the fight in the house, mm-hmm. where it was like it felt. Because I mean, I think of one big problem too that a lot of movies struggle with with the action is and this is a big problem in our the movie we did for our other bonus episode we talked about it uh the predator where the final fight in that movie there's no sense of reference right like there's no establishing shot to where people are in relation to each other and but like in this one you just always know even even in the final fight where this is weird amorphous bullshit going on Mm -hmm. that we won't go into because no spoilers yet uh but you still understand it, and you know where people are in relation to each other, and it's fucking awesome. Well, and that, that house fight scene, you know, they took a really small, claustrophobic, cramped fight environment. Yeah. You know, where there's a lot of characters, a lot of movement happening, but like, yeah. they, they choreographed it and animated it in such a way that, like, everything felt tight, but, like, it still had its room. Yeah. You know? And it just all flowed together. It was like, all right, this person kicks this person, then the camera goes forward into this. Yeah. And it just had this nice, really almost song-like progression to it through it. <laughs> Which... Might be like one of the benefits of like, you know, basically making a comic book come into animation. Yeah, is that it? It already had like a, a foundation for trying to create like scenes and clarity. Yeah, with you know, uh, I guess simple camera shots in a way because like, you know, you're looking at a fight that fight scene if it was actually just uh, drawn out on like an actual comic, and clarity and like. Under, like fluidity of the scenes is super important in that context too because you have to imagine what the filler is right so yeah. you have to have like a clear link between one frame and the next and I felt like the movie really captured that and uh, almost used that to its advantage to be able to kind of paint a story that otherwise couldn't be told yeah if it was a normal animation <laughs> yeah uh, kind of style definitely was there anything you had to say about the enemy um <laughs> uh. If I had to give it a rating, it'd be a 10. <laughs> a 10 out of 10. That animation was fucking amazing. I thought one thing, too, that was really great, and it was the character design. I mean, I could not help but get a big smile on my fucking face every time Kingpin was on screen. Dude, I know. <laughs> a hulky mass of a man with a head pretty much in his chest. <laughs> his shoulders are just so masculine. He his arms are hanging straight down by his side. <laughs> he honestly... I know I whispered this to you while we were watching the movie, but Murray, have you ever seen the triplets of Belleville? Mm-hmm. There are, um, like, what are they, antagonists that look exactly like Kingpin. Really? Yeah. Uh, Aaron, are you looking up a picture? I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm not sure what the call. The, oh, here. I got it. Oh my god. I know, right? <laughs> they're just, they're Kingpin, but French. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Whoops. And they hold like a, like a little dwarf uh-huh. Frenchie between them. Well, because like all the characters were designed even in ways that like look ridiculous, like Kingpin. Yeah. But the the designs like catered to the characters so well that you don't all, you almost didn't really notice. It just mm-hmm. it contributed to what like you think of them. Yeah. And how you feel about them more than it made you notice. Like half the time I didn't notice. I'm like, yeah, he's just a big square that looks weird. But, like, it worked so well with his character that, you know, it, yeah. like, it, it, it helped develop his just, like, kind of menace, I guess. Well, yeah, and that's a big thing when it comes to animation, too, is the character design. And, like, really good character designs like this, you can just look at them and understand everything you need to know. Mm-hmm. Like, it's one of the big problems with Illumination movies, right? Look at a minion. It's like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, what am I supposed to take away from that? <laughs> like, you look at Gru. And it's like, what? I don't even know what anything about him yeah like he's just weird looking 
But like you look at Kingpin, or you look at his one sidekick guy, who's the purple guy, who's the villain name I don't know of. Yeah. No, but he's got like the gauntlets and the motorcycle oh, chopper. He was one of my favorite fucking characters on screen. He was so awesome. But it's like you saw him, and it was just like that's a bad motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that is, he is gonna fuck some people up. You know, and I wanted to talk about the sound design to go along with him. Oh yeah. Get there, but no, we can go into it right now. Like, dude, I was a, when he was like chasing Miles down. Mm-hmm. That was actually terrifying. He was, was scary. <laughs> he was real fucking scary. Because he's fucking fast. <laughs> and then the sound design for it was flawless with yeah. that re- repetitive, like, uh, um, like the motif of just, like, that, like, horn kind of going. Yeah. There was, like, that, and then there was just, like, the, the metal of his boots just, like, a ding, 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 God, it was like, so every, terrifying. Every time he moved, you would hear that sound, and it was just, like, it would fucking strike fear in you. Know? <laughs> it was great. And I liked, too, with a lot of his uh, scenes, and the, especially the chases, and it did it throughout the movie, but I thought the editing was really fantastic, mm-hmm. especially how it almost went um, very sa- Samurai Jack style, yeah. where it would do, like, the three slices, and then, like, they would each progress and then go away, and, like, it just had all these awesome sort of framing ways that you just don't see mm-hmm. very often anymore at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess it's not, it's not really too much of a spoiler, because it's just an individual scene, but like when you see the purple guy like stalking around in the apartment mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you know sticks his head out <laughs> yeah. like and you know I get ahead that sound effect yeah and it's just like oh fuck yeah like you that- know, actually, normally in scenes like that I'm like okay yeah he's not gonna see him blah 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 yeah. you know it's gonna be like fake tense but this one was actually like holy shit like yeah. that, actually that, tense. that was a legit jump scare for me yeah <laughs> <laughs> got me. that fucking light motif for him just nailed it. <laughs> just nailed the hell out of it. It was fucking just badass. I just want to. I want to feel more of what I felt when he was chasing. Uh, one of the other big things I wanted to talk about, not going too far into it until we get into spoilers, which I think after this we could probably bridge into it. Yeah. Um, I th- one thing that I was worried about, and I was actually talking to one of my uncles t- about recently, was just I th- thought that this movie really had to do something interesting with its story for me to give a shit because we are at the point where we had a trilogy of Tobey Maguire <laughs> two to three years off two movies of Andrew Garfield and now a more Spider-Man back mm-hmm. in the MCU and I was like and now we have other and then we had Venom yeah. <laughs> and now we have another disconnected completely separate Spider-Man movie and I was like I don't know if I can give a shit about this right um but I think the narrative is so fucking off the wall and just like nothing else that you can get that it totally fucking worked and I care yeah. and the other big thing too was you get you get the beats of everyone's origin story and I guess for Miles it is a bit of an origin story because he's figuring out his powers throughout the movie mm-hmm. but it doesn't feel like an origin movie mm-hmm. like there's never they, they mask it so well with characters that know what they're doing and him just kind of getting wrapped up in the plot that there's like no montage of right. really of him like really trying to figure something out. There's a little bit, right, a very little bit, and but it, not it, too much. If I feel like it's self aware in that regards, how like you know the other Spider Man and stuff is like, all right, let's just get on with it. Yeah, let's get on with the fucking action, the superhero movie shit. Yeah, and you can catch up. Yeah, you know, and like when the main character is being like forced to drag along, where the story's almost not about him. Yeah. You know, that's just such an interesting way to frame it. Yeah, definitely. Alright, uh, do we want to go into spoilers then? Yeah. Sure. So, before we do that, um, I think we should say our final rating, recommends, uh, whether or not people should see it, so that if they don't want to hear the spoilers, they can just leave now, get everything they want to get out. Soraya, what would you rate Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? Well, right after I wanted to give it a 10, and but now I think... I think I'd give it a good solid nine. Okay. And I would definitely go see this. If you want, if you're a movie buff and you're sick and tired of the shit movies that are coming out, this is definitely a movie that, that can like make you believe in the movie industry. <laughs> well, it, it's, it's, it's new. It's fresh. It's like something, yeah. you know, I don't think it's, I've seen before. Yeah. So. It's yeah. what you said. Murray, what would you give it? I feel weird giving it a 10, so I'll give it a 9. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because, um, I mean, yeah, there was some cliches in it, but, I mean, the whole, like I said, kind of in the previous superhero podcast was that 
kind of the point of superheroes is almost to keep relaying these same messages of like you know believing in yourself and stuff mm -hmm. like that yeah. and in this it was about like you know taking a, a leap of faith you know which it sounds cliche because it's so repeated so much but that's almost what makes a superhero movie a classic superhero movie yeah you know so I, I don't really think it's a detriment to this movie you know to say that yeah it has some repeating themes to previous mm -hmm. When I, I thought that this put an interesting twist on that because it wasn't even just saying like just take a leap of faith yeah it was almost saying like you can't just wait for people to explain it to you like if you want to do something you just got to do it right like just go do it and you'll figure it out along the way yeah which I like that sort of twist to it um I think I'll come down a little bit down from you guys I'll, I'd probably give it an 8 um I loved it thought it was great but for me it did start slowing down a little bit in the middle with the repeated emotional beats. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I guess to go above an eight, I would just need I would need a little bit more from it as far as like theme or message around it. Even though it's a kid movie, I know, but like, well, I didn't, it didn't feel like a kid movie. Really. It did to me at some parts. It had a couple of moments where I was like, oh. Well, I think that's <laughs> when it comes into the like the message, like yeah, the, how how to be a better person messages kind of deal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of it too. The reason I'd want to give it a nine as opposed to like an eight is just because I want to, I want to see more of it now. Yeah. Yeah. And not many movies make me want to see immediately go out and like I want to I want to keep watching this movie, but like, <laughs> I want, yeah, I want more to it. Like, give me a sequel, like now. <laughs> Def yeah, I would, I think all three of us definitely agree to just go see it though for sure. Mm -hmm. If you have any interest in it, just go see it. Cannot recommend Spider Man Noir enough. <laughs> this is the best part of the movie. <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, this is intro line. Flawless. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, then where you can go into spoilers, I think. So, um, plot-wise, later in the plot, it gets pretty ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> With, uh, dimensions coming together and sort of ending up in an underground chamber with different dimensions colliding and expanding and then disappearing all at once in a grand yeah. fight scene which admittedly was my one real complaint for it yes yeah. it seemed like visual vomit after a while during that fight scene because it lasted so long um, I, I was all I was, I was physically like exhausted just watching that end fight scene for so long yeah just trying to figure out where everything was and yeah who's doing what i liked what they did with it though well, it was you, my big thing like it, it i totally agree with you though it was, it was a lot to take it yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a sensory overload you know, I, okay, I, I said that's my only complaint. There's one more complaint. And that's just uh, how Kingpin, you know, they showed his motives pr pretty, like, clearly. Yeah. You know, on why he was trying to connect these dimensions. You know, bringing back his family, basically. Um, but, you know, and then it also made it obvious what the flaws in his plan would be. Yeah. You know, like how they would, sp you know, their atoms and, like, their body would start to decay. Um, just like all the other super, the other Spider Man, um, but you know, I, f I felt like they built that up, and then they could have played with it a little bit more on trying to defeat Kingpin, or like have him like have some kind of character development in that regards. Yeah, because mm. I show him struggle with it for a little bit when they're like you know on the subway train. Yeah, mm. but they kind of drop it there. He's like, no, I'm going to be the bad guy. You know, yeah. I'm going to beat them up and fight. This them. is all Spider Man's fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and I felt like that was kind of a wasted opportunity. Um, yeah. But aside from that, you know. Because, yeah. like, I, I didn't really like how it's, like, just a classic beat the bad guy type of thing. Yeah. It could have been, it would have been nice if they had found a way to maybe, instead of doing that, like, with his wife and daughter's, like, forms of them starting to come back, they could have, like, shown him what the problem with his thinking is mm -hmm. and been, like, well, kind of fucking it up. And oh, it was not a daughter, it was a son. Something. It was a son. I thought. But you know, and I'm sexist. <laughs> another thing too is like with that is, you know, he was pulling them from their own dimension. He wasn't just pulling like a copy of them. He was pulling the physical, you know, his physical family from another dimension, from their family. Yeah. You know, from him in another dimension, yeah. who might have been fine. Yeah. That that for me that entire time, I was like, why doesn't he just go instead of bringing them here? And then I forgot that like. If they're in a different dimension for too long, their body starts degrading. Mm -hmm. But, like, it would have just seemed simpler. Yeah. 
instead of him bringing everything there that he could have just gone there. Yeah. And, it, and how would he have explained it to, you know, his wife and stuff? Yeah. It, it, it was definitely a plot that had a lot of problems. But I liked that it wasn't just a doomsday plot. Yeah. It wasn't just, oh, Kingpin wants to destroy the city or destroy yeah. the world. At least yeah. it had some heart to it and some originality. Well, it made it more powerful saying that, you know, he's willing to sacrifice his entire dimension and universe and world. Yeah. And life to be able to have a chance with his family again. Yeah. Uh, even if it meant, you know, because he was just so caught up in the emotion and the pain of it that he neglected to see that he would actually be doing more damage even to his family yeah by going through with the plan which you know again is like a really powerful thing and i wish they would have like given him something to go beyond with it mm -hmm. instead of just saying okay no spider-man's a bad guy i'm just gonna fight him yeah like you know give him some kind of character development where he starts to realize the like the flaw in his plan because yeah. i don't think he, at any point he ever realized that no not at all you know he and, got punched a lot yeah you know so i think that's that's pretty much my only big plot issue and i mean the plot that it has now i mean it works it's fine it's just i felt like they could have gone a little deeper with it where did the chick go the the octopus lady we see her like stop oh. herself between the two buses and she's looking she up she is coming back towards the pig in the mech or something or noir oh. and then the truck hits her <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. and they're like they're like because remember they're like oh this is gonna be tough and then the truck hits her and they're like guess not. <laughs> so either she like died or probably got like knocked into the other dimension yeah. or something. Which I thought was a really funny way to take yeah. <laughs> I really liked the action in that scene though, like especially when they're going against Kingpin and Peter Parker, Miles Morales, and then Gwen Stacy all do like they like swing hit, swing hit, swing hit. Like it was just a lot of cool sort of combination attacks. I like how they use like the entire too with all the coming mm -hmm. buildings and then that one train scene yeah where miles like kind of disappears into it yeah and takes it off for a ride or like when there's the two uh like the two buildings colliding and he's like skydiving the mm -hmm. it's just like one of the coolest ones when that that one piece of debris was just flying past him really fast and then as it flew past he's like, and just fucking, <laughs> he just like stuck it and then went flying with it like oh. it was so smooth and fucking badass dude this this movie was the best advertisement for the spider-man game ever because it looked so cool to be Spider-Man. I was like, I kind of want to get the game just yeah. to be Spider-Man. <laughs> um, but one of the big problems with the story I had was the Uncle Aaron being evil. Yeah, because why? Yeah, it was just so pointless. It didn't fit. It didn't at all. And it was so fast. Mm -hmm. Like, because it, I, I mean, I saw it come from a mile away. It was really obvious. But it was like, all right, you got him introduced. Oh, really? You thought it was really obvious? Yeah, once, once the... His dad Talks about was like he went down a bad path. I was like, oh, he's a villain. Like it's Spider Man, he's a villain. Yes, but I, I don't know. I thought it was, but and then especially once he was like, oh, I'm gone for the week. I was like, ah, he's villainy. Oh, I right. thought he was just off doing drugs or something. <laughs> just doing hood rat shit. Yeah, but it was just just like going down a bad road just auto automatically makes me feel like. He's like selling drugs or like yeah doing something. I mean, I think that's the real world parallel. Yeah. But when it's a children's superhero movie, yeah. a you're a villain. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I, I kind of didn't like that just because it was so pointless. But and I mean, it, it kind of diminished the coolness of that character to me because I would have preferred it if that thing was just a faceless killing drone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just because I thought it was. Yeah, because he was just so horrifying and like robotic about it. And then you you get him in there. It's like, oh okay. Well, he didn't mean any of it. Yeah. Because it's his nephew. But props to this movie though for having the balls to shoot him on screen mm -hmm. and have Kingpin fucking pummel Peter Parker to death Dude. on screen. Fuck, man. <laughs> that was that was the ballsiest fucking thing ever. But he made it. He made it work so well. Yeah, or it was something because they made it sound like you know the Peter Parker the, like the good one was all basically said, sorry we'll team up you know we'll yeah. we'll do this together and everything. When I always get up. We're he doing knew, this. Yeah, he he knew that he was fucked. Yeah, but yeah. like that fucking was, Chris that Pine. Was messed up. Yeah. <laughs> it was good though. It was a very very good intro. I was like, oh shit, like there's consequences in this. Yeah, and I mean even as far as the uncle thing goes, I mean even if they could have just added like a couple scenes just to kind of give him some context into how he ended up in that role. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because sure. after, after they were done tagging the thing, he's like, oh, I got to get going. You know, yeah. and that's basically when you find out that he was 
you know fighting superman or spider-man and shit yeah you know it's like how that was a quick transition like why would he be out with his nephew like 10 minutes before he has to go be a bad yeah. guy um you know give him some content because they kind of led into it like oh he's you know not doing so great he's bouncing between jobs all the time yeah you know give us some like context for why he's willing to do such evil shit yeah why is he willing to also risk destroying the dimension for kingpin mm -hmm. like what does he have to get out of it yeah right like how, how rough is his actual life yeah you know um I, I, I will say too I know I kind of complained about some of the emotional beats being a little bit too repetitive and losing me but some of them did hit me pretty good mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff with his dad probably because I have a little bit of daddy issues <laughs> but a lot some a lot of it hit pretty good for me well and like I was saying with how like the comic book stylized stuff really can help with storytelling is you know like I was saying with the the, sh the shot where it shows his dad on the one side of the door and he's tied mm -hmm. up on the other one yep. yeah you know like that would have been a real cliche ham-fisted lame kind of scene if it was like in a normal animation saying like oh my god look at them both yeah. but it was like it still fit within the context of a comic book basically like that's a scene you would have seen in the actual mm -hmm. you know a physical book and uh which that made it more powerful i think oh yes yeah, like, definitely I, th I felt that was a really good scene yeah i thought this movie uh incorporated comic book style very well yeah, yeah. and i was worried about it being ham-fisted i comic. thought so too but like each each scene was just like I could definitely see this being in a comic book. Yeah. It makes me want to read comics now. <laughs> well, and it, it felt, it didn't feel like a comic book by the end of it. Yeah. You know, it felt like, you know, that kind of art style, that's normal. Yeah. You know? Well, I think it helped too, just because it, it, you could tell that they really know and love comic books. Yeah. Like, it didn't feel like a gimmick. Mm -hmm. You know, that they were just kind of like, well, I guess we'll just kind of take some stuff from comics, I guess, and put it in here. It just felt like people who really fucking love comic books really wanted to make a comic book movie yeah I don't know do you guys have any closing thoughts then I, honestly I I, I kind of want to just see it again while it's still in theaters <laughs> like you know go see it as a matinee or something let's go on Tuesday it's yeah. only five dollars I was legitimately saying <laughs> let's go Tuesday but um I guess I want this is one of those movies where I want there to, I want them to have spinoffs for each character <laughs> well, Even the porky Peter Pork. Peter Porker. Pork. <laughs> well, because that's the thing. I mean, like, it's a, it's fun. Like, it's the yeah. first fucking real fun movie that I've seen in a long time. Yeah. That wasn't just like kind of a drag in some way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mainly just want them to spin off on Noir Spider-Man. Spider-Man Noir. <laughs> <laughs> With his little and it smells like rain. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think that's going to do it for our bonus episode here, though. Um, if you're interested in the main podcast, we did just also upload alongside this one an hour-long review of Batman vs. Superman. And it went just as well as this. <laughs> just as just as glowing of a, of a review. Uh, you can find us on SoundCloud or iTunes as Deus Ex Cinema or on YouTube at the Default White Guys where we post a podcast every Monday and gameplay videos every Tuesday and Friday. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time.